it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, so guys, we'll start this off with a question for the panel. I think it's helped you guys a lot. How do you define success? And we'll start with uh, Bianca Kevo. How did I find success? How do you define success? What does that mean for you? Success is, you know, being free, being able to do what I want to do every day when I wake up. Mm -hmm. For you? Yeah, same thing. Being able to do what you want, when you want, and with whom you want, uh, whenever you want to do it. Because uh, a lot of people don't have that level of freedom in the world, so I agree 100%. Get us? Uh, to be honest, it's working in what you love, you know, because uh, you got to wake up and love your life. You just create that, you know, that life you just want to live every day, you don't want to stop, you know. Sometimes I don't want to sleep and I want to wake up earlier. Just because I live the life I want to live. I Also with my wife, like I'm married but not trapped. It's not like I hide shit. It's everything is up front, like I don't hide anything and I show everything. So, Bless man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> In my definition of success is across the board. If you're not ripped, if you're not rich, if you ain't rare, if you don't stand out, if you ain't across the board successful, it doesn't mean fucking shit to me. If you got straight tits and you're in your Rolls Royce, you look like a fucking clown to me. I'm just laughing at your dumb fucking ass. But this is the whole fucking point. You have a weakness. Change it, motherfucker. How the fuck are you going to lead people if you don't realize your weakness is their way out? They're not going to listen to you. You're sitting there possessing shit that they don't want to have. So, I mean, this is what people say. Oh, it's not about the money. It's about family, Wes. It's about this, about that. Motherfucker, when you're making money, it's about the money. When it's family, it's about family. When you're at the gym, it's about muscle. Whatever you're doing, it's about that. There's no black and white life. It's the gray area. You have to be good at everything. That's the goal, to really excel in every area. I, I roll in most rooms with successful entrepreneurs, and they're just, they're, it's pathetic. They'll have like a before and after picture of their fitness shit, and their after picture looks like their before pic. And I'm like, motherfucker, you're not embarrassed of this shit? Like, you have enough money, and that's what you put out. You're that big of a pussy. Like, I, I just can't get behind anything that's not done at a high level. So knock the one thing off the board first. Then the next thing, then the next thing. Jados is ripped rich and rare. I mean, the whole thing, what's rare mean to me? It means no vices. It means no drugs, no alcohol, no bullshit. You don't have to hide behind nothing. I mean, what's rich? I mean, you get to do what the fuck you want. You don't, I don't need you to be a billionaire to say you're rich. Or Other people, they'll see that even I rent my place. It's 95000 a month. But they're like, you rent your place. It's like, you dumb motherfucker. You don't understand how, how to even operate at my level. People don't buy a $24 million house. They buy $24 million worth of properties that would bring them more money. You don't dump all that into that fucking liability and live in some $24 million pad you bought, stupid. Fucking make investments and you bring it back to this. But everybody thinks they know some shit. And if you don't have the results that I want in some area, I can't fucking listen to you. So most people, I just, I, I won't listen to them. What are they going to tell me? Okay, so... My definition of success will probably be far different than everybody else's on the panel. I'll probably maybe be the lone dissenter, but my definition of success is having a family, having children, and being part of the apparatus of the world. And true wealth is a rejection of materialism. As Christ said himself, what good does it benefit a man to gain the entire world at the cost of his soul? And the, essentially, when I think of wealth, I think of materialism, it's okay to have materialism. It's not against Christian ethics to become rich, become wealthy. But I just think it's all beside the point, ultimately. You're trying to go for a single thing, and it's to achieve something greater you have than money. the person. This is the thing. This is the thing, you guys. If you ain't fit, you can't say it's not all about being, have, being in good why, shape. Why not? If you don't have money, you can't say it's not all about money. Yeah, why not? But if he does have money, he can say that. Why not? He why can't. can't you say it? Why must you have the thing because you, because before you hang, hang on, hang on. Let me ask the question. Because hypothetical is hypocritical. Let me ask the question. Hypothetical is hypocritical. How do you even know what I was going to say before I've even been allowed because to ask the question? I know what you're going to say. Then what was I going to say? You're going to say, how, why can't you ask the question? Okay, so that's not what I was going to say. What I was going to say is how in the world can you create a standard that it's inappropriate to ask somebody, how come if I don't have X thing, because I don't value X thing, does that mean X thing is actually valuable? You've never experienced it, so you can't speak about <laughs> you it. You think that I haven't experienced wealth? Even I, poor I people, was asking if you did. Even poor people experience days of wealth. I was they asking can, if you did. I, I don't people, know who you are. Even Yeah, but even poor people experience days of wealth. And so the thing is, is no, it's no, not. No, definitely not. Definitely yeah, not. Def definitely no, definitely so. not. Definitely so. I've lived the lowest lows and the highest highs. Well, what's the, so what's the distinction? After you make X amount, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if you look at the studies done on this, 
that it does not. I don't hugely, fit no fucking. Standards. It does not hugely improve a person's life. Are you proud of who the fuck you are? Why? Why? why well, don't look at. Are you proud? If you look in the mirror, would you guys say this motherfucker's proud of who the fuck he is? That's a bag of trash, dude. Pull your fucking shirt because off. Because I've been. Tell me you're fucking proud. Because of yourself. I've been to fucking prison. Jesus Christ! Because look I've been at to you, prison. Bro. You got ten inch arms and tits. <laughs> Men don't have tits. No, guys. they go to prison where they get fucking Fuck yeah, where they, they get do. raped up the ass. You've never been to prison. Look, <laughs> that's what happens. Shit you don't know. They go to prison well, where they get raped. Let's, let's you get your ass hold beat. On, hold on, hold on. You think that that's guys, better? Guys, you guys. think that that's okay. better? Let's let him give his his definition of success. And then having tits and ten inch arms let's, is what a man is. Let's, you let, guys. Him, let's let him. Please get his, don't listen to that. Wes, let's let him get his his thing out and then tits. We can have different opinions. Yeah. Titties. Anyway, back to where I was at. Boobs. Yeah. Okay, prison. But anyway, if you want, oh, fuck yeah. if you want to follow the successful mantra of a man who tells you he's reformed from prison, understand why they might have gone there to begin with. And to take yes, care of I do think I do think that a rejection of materialism is something missing in society. And I do think that true wealth is the family. And I think that true wealth is having a wife. And true wealth that is what I think it is, and that is what I think truly success is, is being able to go home and look your family in the face and know that you're doing everything you can to support them. They else is worth more than your children? Like, My dad's a superhero. Look what he brought to the table. Look how hard this guy works. He came from sure. nothing to this. Okay, well, yeah, we can, yeah, we can we have can, a... We can move on, but can, Jesus yeah. Christ, men don't have tits. We can agree on that. Physically... Men he, usually have he hair. Has, we can agree on that, too. He has Physically. crossed over gender barriers. So, what about you, brother? All right, nice. Um, <clears throat> crazy. Uh, being successful is effectively um, acting on your intentions. And I think I agree with Andrew that your intentions must align with something bigger than yourself. In my case, it's God, the Christian God. And so, uh, success, success to me is, is fulfilling on your intentions but maintaining your ethical standards. And if you're doing that as a Christian, you are, in fact, procreating. And if you're not, you're doing something that fills in that gap that's equally uh, effective to uh, contributing to a, 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 a moral society. And I think more, if you're not contributing to a moral society and you're only contributing to a consumerist society, a materialistic society, that's the only thing you're gonna worship. And tons of people worship material things and flash it around, but it's vacant, it's spiritually vacant. The craziest thing is, if you looked at the people who are supposedly materialistic, We've helped more people than these guys who claim Why is helping, what is, why We've is helping, wait, 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 why lives. is helping important to you? I mean, because I know what it's like to be at the bottom. This is why they split it like this. <laughs> this, this I'm sorry you got, I'm sorry you got put over there. No, I know, I know. You don't really fit over there. We need some other little fucking lame douche over there. Oh, man. Here we go. We're on Rumble, right? Yeah. Uh, we're on YouTube, too. Oh, well, fuck it. We can't. do a live. We're not on my channel. Live, baby. We do a live. Bro, a George live. Michael oh, wants his pants back. Dude, <laughs> God damn. Look at whose shirt is that? Dude, that your, your fucking mom bought you that. Your aunt bought you that. For fucking Thanksgiving dinner. That's like Oshkosh Bagosh or some shit, bro. Welcome Jesus to the, welcome to the roast, roast session today. Dude, hey, what's success, right? Freeing the slaves. That's what it is. Mental slaves, man. That's what it is, man. And I gotta agree with Wes, you gotta help people out. Like you can't, like, it, it's true, you, uh, this whole thing, right? I came from no money. Immigrant, Mexican, having trouble with the body. You know, so shout out Wes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, but you know, we've helped a lot of people. We made millionaires and let's change people's lives. Let's help people get fucking families. And now people have the time to fucking go to the gym, do everything. But it's, it's about freeing your mind. And that's what, that's what I'm proud of and that, that's what I do. That's what Charlie does. That's what most of these men on this panel do is we free people from their fucking mental slavery. Period. Okay. So, oh man. Well, here's the thing. I, I'll tell you this. We got a bunch of masking guys on a panel because they're arguing with each other. So that's how you know. <laughs> Um, Those are some stuff. So, Mr. Steal Yo Bitch yeah, and so his buddy. Keep, keep shaving your body. So what, what, I will say, what I will say is this. Um, I think the definition of success is a combination of everything that everyone on the panel has said, whether being free, be, being able to have a family, um, being able to have your money on point, being in shape, which I agree with 100%. Um, if you are going to be married, you're free, and you run the marriage the way that you want. Um, Those karate bodies. Being free. I think all these... Uh, how do I say this? All these attributes absolutely make you 
into the top tier guy. And it, it really comes down to having all the pieces, right? We talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! and all five pieces of Exodia. You got to have all five pieces. The piece that I'm missing right now, which I will admit that, um, that Wilson has, is that um, religion does matter, right? Whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jewish, etc. Understanding that there's a higher power and being devout to something and understanding that and following God is very important. That's something that I need to work on myself. And I'm definitely going to admit that, you know, I haven't been the best Muslim. I haven't been the most devout Muslim. And it's something that I need to go back to at some point. But I think being religious is very important. And it's something that I'm missing. You know, obviously I have the fitness, the money, girls, whatever the hell it may be. But at the end of the day, to be fulfilled, you need that religious component, I, I think. Especially when you have it all. So, um... No one here on the panel is wrong, honestly. Um, some guys are specialized in other things. Some guys are better at some things than others. But I think the general message, the underlying message is 100% correct. You've got to have your money on point. You can't be a fat piece of shit. you got to be able to run the marriage if you are married the way that you want, where you're able to have an open relationship, where you're able to be on a private jet with four other women with your wife. Or if you want to be monogamous, that's fine too. But I think you need to be able to run your life the way that you want, understand that you're put on this earth for a reason, and God put you here for a reason, and it's not to waste it away. So turn it to fresh. I think success just means you have a choice that you can make every day. So waking up saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my life, I'll do. And ultimately, if you're a guy out here, you want to be successful for yourself and your family. So I think for most people here, you want to grind, make money to invest for your family. But how do you get there? And it's having goals, setting it for yourself, running it back. How do I get to this point? And execution. And I think for most people here, by yourself, you can't get it done. But with a team, people that are successful or on the way up, you can get it done. So I think having, having a good network of people around you and having that mindset and goals helps to go all the way. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, we all have different opinions and uh, <clears throat> it's success in different ways. As, yeah. as, as, you, as you guys see, oh, yeah. everyone has a perspective of life. Sorry yeah. for my English and Spanish, you know. But what you got to understand is your perspective is going to shape your reality. Yeah. Okay? So... There's many things being said here, but one thing I got to say that I back up with is that you can, you can never be truly like in peace with yourself if you're not proud of how you look. Because to be present, you're going to be proud of your presence. So, you know, you got to be proud of how you look at the, in the mirror. That's money on the side, you know. I've been broke and I've been rich. I'm always going to choose rich, bro. You know, I've been fat and I've been in shape. I'm always going to choose in shape. You know, so I feel that's the main uh, message here. You guys got to be proud of who you are because if not, you're not going to be walking around of your best version of yourself. Well said. Okay, second question, guys, is going to be, what is your daily routine for success? We'll start here. What's my daily routine for success? Now when you wake up, what's your routine like? My routine is as soon as I wake up, I'm on my fucking phone. Fucking answering questions, <laughs> helping people out. But it's, it's really, it's, it's really, it's, I, I guess it really starts with when I go to sleep, honestly. Mm. Because it's the sort of thing where, like, if people need me, I'm up until I fucking can't stay up anymore. And then I wake up, and then that's what I do. And then this is something to what you guys were saying where it's a passion. Where, like, you got to love what you do, you know. And I, really, and I really feel with that because depending on what you do for a living and stuff, you literally can get consumed by it. And, and a lot of times to be successful, you have to be consumed by it. So I'm truly addicted to what I do. So that's, that's my whole thing. It's just all day staying on top, helping my guys. And then whenever I sleep, I sleep. But, you know, trying to add better, like, habits to that. You know? Okay. Jim? Um, I'm going to speak from the creative side. How many creatives do we have in the, in the audience? And I don't mean you wear a fedora. I mean you create. You, you do stuff. <coughs> My uh, being effective creatively, I found that you have to do your creativity the first thing in the morning. If you have other things to do, if you're a father, if you're working a job on the side, you're going to be resentful if you don't do that immediately. I, I promise you, if you do that in the morning, there's no excuses. You don't resent your job or your second job or your family for getting in the way of your creativity. Just wake your ass up in the morning. Don't make any excuses. Get it done. It's out of the way. Even if it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, that's, uh, that's my routine. All right. Andrew? Yeah, so I start off um, by playing video games with my kids. That's the first thing I start off by doing. And then basically the rest of the day I read books. I read, I read more, and then I read more on top of that. And that's, for me, what, what I've seen inside of the United States is that most people are illiterate. Because they're illiterate, they can't actually train themselves how to do any of this type of stuff. 
They don't even know how to read. And they don't know history. They don't know anything. If, if you were even trying to be materially well off and wealthy, still literacy and being able to understand what it is that you're reading and having a good basis for history, I think, is a necessity for even material success. So I would recommend uh, that you read more than anything that you read. And it's something that, uh, that I notice a lot of people can't do. All right. Wes? You guys, Jesus, fuck. Okay, get out. We're definitely you on guys, out. We don't have an education issue. We have an application issue. Everything is very easy to do. You have to sit down in the morning. Your conscience is the authentic voice of God. If you look in the mirror and you got tits like fat boy, then in the mirror your conscience is telling you, God damn, you should probably do something about that. So as you wake up, your conscience is telling you, to make a move to do something. When you guys wake up tomorrow, what will it be? Maybe drop the drink. Maybe go work out. Maybe be better than people around you. I mean, I've helped and saved more lives than most people could ever fathom, literally, from a very simple process because prison, prison has a, a way of programming that makes you mentally strong. So, I mean, the whole point is, is to really listen to your conscience and have it guide you to the areas that you need to change. I've been getting up at 2.45 for 16 years. I got up at 2.45 for 16 years straight, have never missed, because I knew I had to be mentally strong to be the leader I needed to be when I came out. So I came out, and I showed everyone what worked for me in prison to get through my hardest days, the hardest fucking days of my life. I started my time at 25 years old and got out at 35. There was, there was a, a million thoughts that went through my mind that there's no fucking way I'm going to be successful again. But I didn't care about that. I really just fought through all the pain of what, what I knew I could be, what I knew I could do, and I really listened to what I had to be. So I was drawn to creating this individual that I admire. And regardless of, look it, if that's what he admires, good. I want you guys to do this and know this is your purpose, to create the man you admire in every way and give that person to the world. So if you create the individual that you unbiasedly admire, you can step in the mirror and say men are supposed to wear bras. If that's what you really believe, then you can do that. But I believe that the man I admire is who's standing in front of you. Someone who's ripped, someone who's rich, and someone who has rare habits that built them into a real leader in a world full of fucking pussies who are so mentally weak, they just side with themselves all day instead of what would really benefit themselves. If that's who you admire, who's looking at you in the mirror, run with that. But if you step in the mirror and your heart, which is God speaking to you, tells you to make changes, make them. Well and said. that's it. That's, that's what I want you to do. Like your conscience is the authentic voice of God. And I, I, I teach everyone about conscience congruency, living in congruence with your conscience. And that means that everything you're being called to do, no matter how difficult it is, you do it. That's it. So what the fuck changes do you have to make? You got to make them. My, my, my first goal is to just get to that point where I'm grateful. Um, you know, I've had my best days. I have very good days when I had no money, and I have very good days when I have money, and very bad days with no money, and very bad days when you have money. So money doesn't change really anything. It's just more comfortable. So my first thing in the morning, I wake up 4.30 every morning. It's a must, because if not, I'll just go back to party, to drugs, to all that stuff. I hit the gym. I read, you know, I reflect, and I want to be close to God because that's the only thing that really brings me peace, you know. And all, after that, I just have my process, you know, start working, you know, answering DMs, helping people solve the problems I had myself. And just I feel like if I don't give 100% that day, wherever I am, I feel bad. So my, my only goal every day is just to feel good. Everything I do is to feel fucking good. Like, the thing is that when you give the 100% every day, but I mean 100%. People think they're just giving 100%, and you're not, bro. You know, like, you're not. If you really surround yourself with top people, you think, like, what the fuck, man? I'm literally doing 5%. This is why we have more, because we actually do more, bro. You know, like, luck, they, oh, he was lucky. Bro, luck is God. Like, everyone has what they deserve. It's, it's literally facts. Just check out where people come from. I don't get impressed by Bugatti. I want to see where he came from. Like, how long did it take? Who helped him? You know, where he come from? How he did it? How did he did it? How he makes his money? So just wake up every day to be grateful, to feel good, and no one feels good, you know, 
going party. No one. I, I used to play video games all day, bro. That, that doesn't make you feel good. You escape reality. Drugs, you escape in reality. You know, chasing women, you escape in reality. Why are you escaping? What are you escaping? You know, every time I, I see someone like drinking, I was the other day in the yard. The yard beside was doing a party, everyone drinking. And I was sitting there and I was like, dude, what the fuck are these people escaping? Like, the lives are so bad, dude. Are you, is your life so bad you have to escape your reality? Just stop there, drop the drink, drop the drugs, and think, what the fuck are you escaping from? Is it your, is it your wife? Is it your family? Is it your kids? Is it yourself? Just figure out what it is and attack it. Well said. For me, it's just being obsessed with problem solving. So basically every morning you wake up, you're like, okay, what's the problem that I'm trying to solve today? For some people it might be <clears throat> you know, working out, some people it might be money, some people it might be women, it's other things, right? But if you actually truly get 100% interested and obsessed with what you're doing, there's no way you can't have success. Like a lot of you guys are basically saying the same thing. Just keep doing these steps, you know, um, bit by bit every day, right? So what we tell people uh, in our course and different things that we teach, it's like, hey, if you're starting out, just start out with like, you know, 30 minutes a day, right? And then ramp it up from there. You don't have to be like an obsessed crazy person from the get-go, but as you gain success, you will, in my opinion, or at least my experience, um, you will want you will just kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe it's my personality too, but you just automatically become obsessed with what you're doing and then that leads to more success. So it's kind of a snowball effect. Of course, you know, you do have to have some balance. You have to have some time off from here and there, but, um, you know, keep the pedal to the metal and, uh, you know, with whatever it is that you are doing and pursuing and be consistent with it, right? I think the biggest thing that I tend to say with people is consistency and persistence are the only two fucking things that you need in life to actually succeed. Right, so the more that you're consistent, the more you're persistent, and the more you're obsessed, um, and then you keep going towards your goals and you don't give up, you're bound to have success. Um, some people start in different places than others, so some people have to work harder to, uh, you know, escape the um, what do you call it, the gravity of you know their situation per se. But um, once they do, right, it's a freeing experience, and then you do have to reset your goals at that point, right? You have to be like, okay. So what am I doing now? Where's that? I hit a plateau. Okay, where's the next level from here? Because, yeah, maybe I was, you know, in a very negative place. And now, you know, I'm good. Okay, now I'm good. Now how do I get great, right? And so uh, keep pushing yourself and uh, follow those three things. All right. The very first thing I do, I wake up, I pray about 5 in the morning. Then I go to the gym about two hours. And then I just figure out ways to try to make the money that I spent the last day, you know what I mean? Which... <laughs> that's my main goal, like, you know what I mean? And I just try to help as many people as I can. That's my goal. That's all I be. I like that. I like that. You live day by day, bro. People just fucking, oh, what are you going to do in five years? Motherfucker, I just wish I wake up tomorrow. You know? I got, I got $55,000 worth of recurring revenue that I make every day if I sit on my fucking thumb and just sit on my ass and fucking play with my balls playing video games. I make 55000 a day no matter what the fuck I do. Oh, wait, I was supposed to say F bomb anymore. So no matter what, 55 grand a day. But I still get up to show everyone how to live. I still get up to help everyone. I still make a gang of content every day. Because I remember when I was that dude on the prison cell floor and I needed a message to get my ass up. I needed something to motivate me. And the thing was is the, the people who need help, that really need help, are the old me. The dude who will smoke you for some rims on his car. The dude who will seriously take your life to get the stuff he wants. That's the person who needs to relate to someone like me. You don't need to circle jerk a bunch of woke folks who are like, it's not about money. You're not helping Karen by saving 17 other Karens. You need to save the people who are actually the problems of the world, the old me. Those are the people who need saving. And those are the materialistic people. So you need to show those people there's a new route to make money, building your personal brand, teaching people how to really gain control of their life, you know? Well, uh, so my schedule, guys, it's, it's a little weird. Um, so I wake up, right? It could be somewhere late morning, afternoon, and uh, you guys will see here why it's so late in a second. I'll typically wake up, and the first thing I do is I deal with my real estate. As you guys know, I have 20 real estate properties, almost 50-plus tenants, et cetera. So that becomes extremely um, cumbersome and annoying, right? You're making sure that bills are paid, mortgages are paid, water bills are paid, you know, tenants are happy. This tenant is on Section 8. They didn't pay their portion. Evictions. Oh, this guy didn't pay his rent, etc. So that's a whole other 
thing. I'm dealing with that most of the time throughout the day. And then, um, you know, if we got a show, obviously I'm preparing for the show. Um, whether it's me and Fresh going back and forth, figuring out what we're going to talk about, um, or if we have a topic at hand or responding to a hater or whatever it may be, I'm writing on the notebook, right? Um, and we're getting ready for the show. We do the show. As you guys know, we do two shows, right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We do the daytime show. Then the girls come in. So if I didn't work out already earlier, what I'll do is in between the two shows, I'll get a quick workout in. I'll go downstairs, get a quick 45 minutes to 60 minute session in. I'm training, you know, full body workouts and specialization days. I'm training four to five days a week. And then after that's done, we got the girls there. We did the nighttime show for you guys. Those shows go into 1, 2 a.m. And then when that's done, obviously cleaning up, take the squad out for food. By the time I'm back in my spot, it's 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And then I'll either A, stream Overwatch, or B, um, I'll hours. go ahead yeah, for, hours, <coughs> for hours into the morning. Or I'll research, um, like, video, YouTube videos, what's going on, what's trending. Go on X, tweet some stuff. You guys see me, I tweet always late at night. That's why I'm um, trying to build the audience up on X. Um, and then post some reels on Instagram before I got banned. And, uh, you know, obviously try to be out there and put content out. So um, that's my day. And then I'll go to sleep at like 7, 8 in the morning sometimes. Sun is coming up. And then wake up and do it again. But I pretty much live my life around the podcast um, to try to get you guys the best content. And that's what I mean when I say like, yo, there's no other podcast that works as hard as we do, man. I genuinely believe that. If you look at all the top podcasts, they might put out two, three videos a week. You know, we're putting out six, right? And that doesn't count Fed Reacts or whatever because I'm, re um, you know, is researching for that as well because, you know, people love true crime. But uh, what about you, Fresh? All right, guys. So I have two schedules. One is serious and one is just playful. So if I'm serious, I have a whiteboard in my room with my goals short term and long term, right? And my thing is like, okay, if I'm focused on making things happen for the business, for the podcast or real estate, I need to focus. So I have a list of things to do daily and then I end up causing an effect of long term goals being successful. So I'll wake up in the morning, hit the gym, either with Kev or with something like that, and then I'll plan out my day for my dry race board. Once that's done, I'll have fun after, maybe go out with some friends, network, but the work is done first, off on the board. Now my other schedule is when I'm like just having fun, I wake up, I do whatever. But the point here is that like guys, if you want to be successful in any endeavor, you need to plan it out. And you may not go according to the plan, but have a written plan down either in a notebook or a dry erase board you can see daily. So when you wake up, all right, am I on point or am I off point? Because you might get somebody saying to you, oh, bro, let's go drink, drink at a bar with some friends. But are you hitting your goals? No. So why are you saying yes to that? You got to say no. So that's why I wake up every morning either with a schedule or with not. But for the most part, it's with a schedule. So, again, everyone said a bunch of fantastic points. I'm going to just weave them all together for you guys in a nice, concise manner. Number one, when it comes to being a masculine creator, you need to have some level of competence and you need to have merit. Because the thing is, and Wes mentioned this earlier, no one's going to listen or give a fuck if you're a loser. Men typically want to follow men that look like and do what they want to do. So... If you're a fitness influencer, you better be in shape. If you're a financial advisor or a financial YouTuber, you better have money. If you're a life coach, you better have a combination of all thereof. If you're a religious coach, you better know the Bible from front to back, right? So you need to be able to be really good at what you do. Optimally, you want to be good at everything so you're well-rounded and a large portion of people can rock with you because some people might, let's say you're, you know, your fitness, life coach, everything, right? Some guys might watch you for the fitness. Some guys might watch you for the finances. Some guys might watch you for the womanizing, right? And that's what we try to blend together with Fresh and Fit, make you guys the best version of yourselves. And then you decide what you want to do with that merit. But the point is, is that if you want to get into this space, you need to have a story first. Not only do you need a story, you need to be authentic with that story. Can people relate to you? Can people see themselves in you? Did you get it out the mud or were you given a silver spoon? People respect guys that are able to get it out the mud and guys that have been through the same struggles that they have. A big reason why we've been able to come, become successful as fresh and fit is because guess what? We're all dealing with the same BS with these girls, right? We're all dealing with the flakes. We're all dealing with the 304s. We're all dealing with the BS. We're all dealing with feminism. We're all dealing with being like second class citizens when it comes to being a man. And we understand that no one gives a shit about you as a man unless you're successful and you have your stuff together. Then people will listen to you. So we're like, damn, okay. There's obviously this void in the market. Guys need help with this. They need to be able to get girls. But then once we started coaching guys, we figured out, wait, you're fat. Wait, you're broke. No wonder girls don't want you. So then we realized, like, holy crap. 
The reason why guys are failing is because they don't have the complete package. That's what girls want at the end of the day, right? But they listen to us because it's like, all right, you guys know what I used to, you guys know my backstory. I used to be a federal agent with Homeland Security Investigations. I did that for the better part of a decade. I learned a bunch of things that I will never learn in any other job field, right? And it made me the man that I am today. And I did that when I was young. And it helped me stay away from drugs. It helped me stay away from partying, et cetera, right? And I was able to develop this mindset and the skill set to be successful. And I'm going to say something very controversial right now, but I was thinking about it while all the guys were telling their stories. Spontaneity is the enemy of success. Why? Because to become successful, you guys heard it from all the guys here, I do the same thing every day. Yep. When you do the same thing every single day, what does that do? That's consistency. Consistency plus time equals what? Success. So people are going to talk smack. Bro, why don't you go to a club with us? Bro, why don't you just have one drink? Bro, just do this one line of coke. Come on, man, live a little, etc. This whole live a little thing is guess what? You're going to live a little, but then you're going to suffer for a long fucking time. And you discipline, the cornerstone of discipline is being able to put away temporary fun for long-term success. Every single guy on this panel, though we have disagreements on certain things, has exercised discipline to become good at what they fucking do. Whether it's cryptocurrency, being a spiritual or religious leader, being able to debate, making it from the bottom, coming from prison, being convicted felon and coming on the other side and becoming multimillionaires. Every single guy has been able to apply consistency plus time equals results. And then once you're able to do that, then you get on the YouTube and you tell your story. Then you get on Instagram and you tell your story. But you need to become the man first before anyone gives a fuck. Well said. Tom DeMarco. Yeah, you, Tom you, DeMarco. You, you, guys, you guys need to make the shift from being consumers to being creators. Like, you just got to make that choice. When am I going to stop consuming and start creating? I mean, I can't even listen to nobody. I came out of prison. I'm like, I wouldn't follow none of these motherfuckers. Never. So I had to create the person I would listen to. And you don't have to listen to me or follow me, but you have to create the person you would listen to. That's why I tell people, they're like, Wes, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? I'm like, who? You have to create who can do it, who you would listen to. That's the biggest thing. Like, if you would listen to you, then now you have a place to speak, you know? The question is, uh, what's your story? And every story has a hero. So we all here on the panel had a hero journey. Came from the bottom to the top either through hardship, trials and errors. But the main thing is you are the author, star of the story. So my thing is, like, if you want to have things in life like we have on stage or, for example, have a good family like what Andrew has as well, it's more like, how do I get there? And ultimately, we all have a routine that we follow. All of us here do a routine every single day, whether you like it or not. And that leads to what? Results. So, listen, take it for what it is. Everyone here on the panel has a different way of doing things, but who do you align with? Who can you follow? Who can you see? You know what? This is like me. I can take this information, use it to my advantage, and become better. That's, what, that's why we're here. And I think that one of the most important things is understanding your weakness and being able to bring in someone into your network that has that strength that can build off of your weakness. And that's how you end up where you're impenetrable, where, okay, I'm not the best at religion. Let me bring someone in that understands this. I could be a better debater. Let me bring someone that does this. I need motivation. I need to get a kick in the ass. Let me bring this person in. I need to understand how to monetize a platform that's usually used for sexuality, but go ahead and give content that otherwise no one else would be able to do on there. So, or making money on cryptocurrency when there's a bunch of scammers out there. So you need to be able to bring people in your circle that excel at what you fail at. 